In phase 1 reactions, we will be dealing with oxidation reaction. Oxidation, I would like to simplify it. Consider this is drug. Consider this is drug. Uh, what you are doing? You are adding oxygen to it. You are adding oxygen to it. So that this drug gets oxidized. This drug gets oxidized. So what you need? First thing is this drug one more thing what you need enzyme enzyme for this will be cytochrome p450 group of enzymes cytochrome p450 enzyme so if you are you if you are adding oxygen you and you are oxidizing drug you need something which is getting reduced that something which is getting reduced is nadp it gets reduced to nadph And to regenerate this back, you need an enzyme that is NADPH ductase. So, what are the requirements of oxidation reaction? First requirement is drug, you need drug. Second requirement is oxygen and you need enzyme cytochrome P450, you need NADP and you need the NADPH reductase which is a flavoprotein. protein. This has been asked as a MCQ question which what are the requirements for phase 1 reaction or oxidation reactions. So uh, phase 1 reactions are this is also known as this is also known as monoxygenase P450 system. It is carried out by drug P450 enzyme molecular oxygen NADPH NADPH P450 reductase which is a flavoprotein. protein. If you see this CYP450, cytochrome P450 or you simply say SIP, there are hundreds, hundreds of types of uh, SIP depending on amino acid sequence and many are involved in drug metabolism. So you need to understand uh, which drug is getting metabolized by which cytochrome P450 SIP enzyme. So you need not remember 100 SIP enzymes, you, you, for, from pharmacological point of view very few are important and those few are cytochrome P3A4 or 5 which metabolizes 50% of the drugs and next important is CYP2D6 which metabolizes 20% of the drugs. Other which are important which you should know is CYP2C8 or 2C9, CYP2C19, CYP2E1 and CYP1A1 or 2. So why, what is this 3A4, 2D6, let's see before going into details, we should know what, uh, what is the nomenclature. We will consider the most common one. CYP 3A4 I said is the most common, it metabolizes 50% of the drugs. So in this CY stands for cytochrome, uh, it is very clear and P stands for P450. If you remember in previous one or two slides, I was saying microsomal and non-microsomal enzymes. What do you mean by microsomal enzymes? I said smooth endoplasmic reticulum, microsomal enzymes are located in smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Why the terms microsomal enzymes? Uh, when you take a cell and you try to separate various fragments of cell, you will start centrifugation of the sample. After centrifugation, what happens? Smooth endoplasmic reticulum is very fragile. It breaks into very small particles and uh, in the test tube, this uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum and its compartment are diffusely distributed. So to separate that, you have to centrifugate it very fast at very fast speeds and for a very longer duration. After centrifugating it for a very fast speed and for longer duration, you will get a fraction. That fraction is microsomal fraction. In that microsomal fraction, when you remove and subject it to spectrophotometry or spectrometry, what you will see, uh, these SIP enzymes have a particular uh, light absorption. That absorption is pink. They produce a pink compound. Hence the term P, pink, pink. P stands for pink. And they absorb which uh, wavelength of light? They absorb maximum peak is at 450 nanometer maximum absorption peak is at 450 nanometer hence cy stands for cytochrome chrome stands chrome meaning color and p stands for pink which and 450 means it's it is its absorption peak now 3 uh, now 3a4 is 
family, subfamily, and individual isoenzyme. So consider in this example, if you see three is a different family and CYP two D six, two C eight, two C nineteen, and two E one. All these four belong to the same family. And this A stands for uh, subfamily, like A B C. Consider this CYP two C. to see these belong to the same family and the individual isoenzyme is again numbered 1 2 3 4 cyp 2c8 or cyp 2c19 so this is about nomenclature of cyp enzymes so what we saw in oxidation what were the requirements of oxidation reaction and how these enzymes are named next because we are discussing with phase 1 reactions and phase 2 reaction these are reactions what we need Mm, again, going into like uh, biochemistry, substrate is required for any reaction. So here the substrate is drug, which is getting metabolized by what? Our microsomal enzymes considered by microsomal enzymes. It is getting metabolized. So now we will come to. Till now we discussed a little bit more towards biochemistry. Now we will be coming to pharmacology proper. So this drug is getting metabolized. what can happen there can be inducers inducers are again other drugs which will induce this enzyme or which will stimulate this enzyme the in if the enzyme is induced what will happen what will happen if the enzyme is induced it will increase its activity how this activity is increased how enzyme activity is increased number of enzymes are increased how will you increase number of enzyme by increasing transcription of the enzyme if you increase more number of transcription more number of enzyme will be synthesized so because it is by transcription uh, enzyme induction requires a time duration a lot of time to get induced and lot of time to get back to normal so it usually takes 1 to 2 weeks 1 to 2 weeks to get peak levels and 1 to 3 weeks to return back to normal levels so it takes time similarly because we are inducing this enzyme what i said microsomal enzymes are inducible hence we can induce these enzymes next there can be inhibitors which can decrease the activity inhibitor will decrease the activity of this decrease activity of this enzyme how can you decrease activity of enzyme the drug inhibitor again are drugs it will bind to the heme iron bind to heme iron bind to heme iron drug goes and bind to heme iron and inhibit the enzyme's activity thereby inhibiting enzyme so this is known as enzyme induction or enzyme inhibition this is important for cyp enzymes or you can say cytochrome p450 enzymes and this is also important for mi for microsomal enzymes uh, apart from cyp there are other microsomal enzymes so for we'll see a few examples of inducers and then we'll see a few examples of inhibitors so first inducers uh, what happens see if you see the reaction your uh, drug is getting metabolized by microsomal enzyme and if you are inducing this microsomal enzyme what will happen more drug gets metabolized if more drug get metabolized the drugs activity the active drug will be lost so in most cases the drugs action will be lost example of loss of drug activity example i will say ocp is metabolized by this microsomal enzyme and it is uh, the microsomal enzyme is cyp 3a4 3a4 this cyp 3a4 is induced by what rifampicin stimulates this so if this is stimulated more ocp will be metabolized and the result will be ocp failure or you can say this will result in drug action failure so this is one consequence of drug induction similarly i will take one more example carbamazepine carbamazepine is metabolized by again cyp 3a4 and the inducer is carbaz carbamazepine itself induces this enzyme so if it is inducing this enzyme what will happen more carbamazepine gets metabolized if more carbamazepine gets metabolized with 
further duration of treatment of carbamazepine therapy what will happen more carbamazepine will be getting metabolized you need more dose of carbamazepine so what will happen you can result in tolerance of drugs this is known as tolerance with time increased dose of drug need is known as tolerance next example is in biotransformation i said drug getting metabolized to inactive is the most common route but sometimes drug is getting converted to toxic metabolite example paracetamol is metabolized by sip to e1 to n-acetyl para n-acetyl para benzoquinine amine imine so this is induced by alcoholism alcoholism induces this enzyme so what happens in alcoholics there are chances of precipitation of hepatotoxicity by this metabolite of paracetamol so it may result in drug toxicity if you see uh, if you see it is not on these microsomal enzymes are not only for drug metabolism they are also metabolizing uh, endogenous substrates apart from drugs example like steroids bilirubin are metabolized by udp glucuronosyl transferase again it is a microsomal enzyme hmm. so you can use this therapeutically for example steroid is excess in cushing syndrome in cushing syndrome there is steroid excess so if you metabolize steroid first steroids you can use this in cushing syndrome so this is by phenytoin can induce steroids metabolism so phenytoin has been used in cushing syndrome and similarly bilirubin metabolism is increased by phenobarbitone phenobarbitone increases metabolism of bilirubin so you can use this in jaundice with jaundice congenital non hemolytic jaundice so this is in enzyme induction is used so enzyme induction is used therapeutically one more example is you know this enzyme dala synthase where it is hmm? where this comes dala synthase it comes in heme synthesis porphyrin synthesis so if you induce this enzyme if you induce this enzyme if you increase this enzyme's activity you will precipitate aip acute intermittent porphyria can be precipitated so this is also a consequence of uh, enzyme induction so uh, there have been questions asked which are the uh, acute intermittent porphyria is precipitated by all except is precipitated by which among the following like these questions have been asked so if you have an idea about which are the drug uh, which are which drugs are enzyme inducers you will come you can Uh, make a smart guess about drugs causing precipitation of AIP. So this was about drug, uh, enzyme induction. We will quickly finish off with enzyme inhibition. Inhibition, what it was doing, inhibiting the drugs activity. If this uh, metabolizing enzymes activity, if this enzyme is inhibited, what will happen? Drug will accumulate. If this is inhibited, drug will accumulate. Drug gets start getting accumulated, and drug toxicity can precipitate. Drug toxicity, drug. is getting metabolized uh, and if you inhibit this metabolism drug is getting metabolized by sip 3a4 if you inhibit that this metabolism you can precipitate drug toxicity but here you should be careful it does not precipitate all drug toxicity why because this enzyme is in excess this enzyme is in excess you cannot inhibit whole of the enzyme in the body so in uh, in first order kinetics this will not cause any harm but if the drug is following zero order kinetics means uh, the enzymes are the pathway by which the drug is getting metabolized is limited by limited enzymes so in that case this drug toxicity will be precipitated zero order kinetics example of zero order kinetics phenytoin ethanol theophylline tolbutamide warfarin 
so in these drugs in these drugs you will precipitate um, drug toxicity by inhibiting enzyme one more case i said was drugs were getting activated inactive drugs were getting activated example of that is pro, uh, such drugs are known as pro drug example is clopidogrel why i am discussing all these is all this has been asked clopidogrel is getting metabolized by cyp2c19 and after getting metabolism what will happen clopidogrel act gets activated so if you inhibit if you inhibit this this is inhibited by ppi like omeprazole omeprazole inhibits this if you inhibit this clopidogrel is not activated see in clinical practice clopidogrel is prescribed commonly and as well as omeprazole is prescribed commonly so omeprazole can inhibit activation of clopidogrel thereby causing failure of uh, efficacy of uh, this clopidogrel failure of drug action so this enzyme inhibition can cause drug toxicity and also it can cause drug failure drug action failure and this enzyme inhibition has also been used clinically for example uh, protease inhibitors like saquinavir indinavir and other navirs are metabolized by cyp3a4 are metabolized by cyp3a4 and are inactivated if you inhibit this cyp3a4 its activity can be increased so this is inhibited by ritonavir which is again a protease inhibitor so we use low dose ritonavir with other protease inhibitor like saquinavir atazanavir indinavir etc so ritonavir plus saquinavir you use in hiv therapy why we are using such combination because ritonavir inhibits enzyme metabolism of saquinavir and saquinavir saquinavir's activity gets boosted very low dose of ritonavir is used so this is used therapeutically to boost activity of other drugs okay